The story begins as a guy nervously rides on a train. When he gets off, he begins to run frantically, but he's found by a group that somehow knows his secret. This group covers the area in smoke, and the man shows his insane fighting skills, as he fends off several attackers. The attackers launch several blades at this guy, so he pulls out a blade of his own to fight back. The attackers then use metal needles called senban. But this guy has crazy reflexes, catching them with his teeth and firing them back at the attackers. Unfortunately, this man is overwhelmed by their sheer number. He is captured when a contraption takes hold of his neck, and he's dragged by a terrifying looking man. This evil guy slams the man into the ground and uses his sword to finish him off. The attackers use a device to confirm that their target has been eliminated and they leave. In another place, there's a farmer called Logan, who finds great joy in his life on the farm. After a fulfilling day, he heads back home to tinker with his motorcycle. While he's engrossed in his work, his young son Kyle decides to play a little game that attempts to sneak up on him. Logan, with a mischievous smile, turns to Kyle and playfully claims that he has eyes on the back of his head. Logan's wife Sarah is taken aback when she sees Logan's face covered in dirt. Kyle clarifies that his mask resembles the ones worn by the Oni, who are known to be troublemakers. Logan cautions him that the Oni might mistake him for one of them, but Kyle is confident that his brave and strong dad will protect him if they ever come after him. Logan playfully mentions that he's not entirely confident about defeating these fictional characters, but Sarah confidently declares that she will handle them for Kyle's sake. Logan jokingly remarks that he needs to hurry and finish repairing his motorcycle as Sarah might find herself in a tough situation battling the Oni. Later, a news report reveals the unfortunate demise of the man they encountered earlier, leaving Sarah worried that it could be the work of the Oni. Kyle firmly believes it was them, but it's time for him to go to bed. He bids his mother goodnight, and Logan reminds him about his upcoming birthday. With Kyle fast asleep, Logan diligently monitors the security cameras installed around his house. Sarah expresses her concern about the mysterious elimination of the man and the lack of information about his identity. Logan reassures her that there's nothing to worry about and guarantees that they won't be discovered in their secluded location. Sarah's main worry revolves around someone known as the Reaper, but Logan explains that it couldn't be him since he always operated alone. The next day, we catch a glimpse of Logan's cautious nature as he meticulously wipes away their fingerprints from a door handle, ensuring their identity remains hidden. The Yum family continues to lead a peaceful and normal life, with Logan doing his best to be a loving father who brings cheer to his son. However, one night, news breaks that another person has lost their life at the hands of a mysterious organization. This incident marks one of several recent occurrences, prompting a large-scale investigation to uncover the truth behind these events. On Kyle's birthday, the affectionate family gathers for a delightful cookout, sharing jokes and singing songs while Kyle blows out the candles on his favorite birthday cake. As Kyle opens a present, he discovers a video game, and Logan surprises him with a new helmet instead of the scary Oni mask. Kyle excitedly declares that he is no longer a bad guy but a hero, thanks to his new helmet. Sarah mentions that she simply enjoys seeing his normal face, and the whole family shares a heartfelt embrace. They couldn't be happier, so they express their love for one another. Later that night, Logan wakes up from bed, but calmly instructs his wife to stay put. Logan quietly makes his way downstairs, where everything appears to be fine. Suddenly, something appears at the window and Logan is ambushed. The attackers forcefully enter, but Logan skillfully fights off several of them. His exceptional abilities allow him to seize one of their weapons, and he uses his sword to eliminate multiple assailants. While he is taking down one opponent, Logan hears his son cry out, alerting him. Without hesitation, Logan springs into action. He blocks an attacker who tries to impede him and completely incapacitates this individual. Logan swiftly rushes to locate his family, reaching for something, but another assailant shoots two metal needles directly into his neck. Despite the obstacles, Logan remains determined and refuses to be deterred. He musters up every ounce of strength to crawl up the stairs, even though the pain is overwhelming. As he reaches the second floor, he is met with a shocking sight. Several attackers are defeated. However, his heart sinks when he sees the lifeless bodies of his family, Kyle and Sarah, on the ground. Overwhelming shock courses through Logan's body, and a sinister figure outside reveals that Logan's wife fought bravely before meeting a tragic end. This revelation ignites a blinding rage within Logan, but before he can react, he is stabbed in the back. Despite his injuries, Logan desperately drags the attacker, determined to reach his family. However, the damage to his body proves too much to overcome. Suddenly, the attackers realize that someone must have alerted the authorities as the distant sound of police sirens fills the air. The leader confirms that Logan is no longer alive, so they depart just before the police show up. The police arrive at the scene and are horrified to discover the slaughtered family. Sometime later, the seemingly lifeless Logan regains consciousness. 
His initial thoughts are of his deceased family, and he vomits due to the overwhelming emotions engulfing his body. The next time Logan awakens, he finds himself in a hospital, and the nurse urgently summons a doctor. Logan utters only his wife's name before passing out once again. Eventually, Logan wakes up, and a doctor explains that he miraculously returned to life after being pronounced dead by the coroner. Logan couldn't care less and simply wants to know about his wife and son. Unfortunately, he is informed that they didn't survive. At that moment, two individuals, Mike and Emma, arrive to visit him. They are from the FBI and seek his assistance in their investigation. They proceed to ask several questions about the possible identity of the attacker. Logan remains silent, but his growing anger is evident to Mike. Sensing that it's not the right time to ask him questions, Mike discreetly hands Logan his card and decides to leave. Later, Mike confides in Emma, expressing his intuition that Logan may have knowledge about the attackers. They agree to take turns keeping an eye on Logan, and Emma volunteers to be the first. As Emma watches Logan from the rooftop, he is overwhelmed by a recent memory of bidding farewell to his family. The nurse had discovered that Logan had intentionally locked the wheelchair, preventing any movement. Overwhelmed with grief and fury, Logan couldn't bear to approach his deceased loved ones. Now on the rooftop, memories of his wife and son flood his mind, fueling his anger. Logan's rage intensifies, and he reaches for his wrist, revealing a metal needle. Logan impales himself with the mysterious object, causing a peculiar transformation in his body. Suddenly, a group of assassins launches an attack on Logan. Fueled by his anger, Logan unleashes his inner fury and skillfully takes down multiple assailants. Displaying astonishing strength and precision, Logan gains control of the fight. But that's not all. Logan performs a unique jutsu, transforming his body into a dense black smoke. His powerful move allows him to swiftly eliminate several more assassins in an instant. Emma, bewildered by the chaos, seeks answers from Logan, but he knocks her unconscious instead. With his rage still burning, Logan relentlessly continues his assault, tearing apart numerous attackers. Despite being vastly outnumbered, Logan strategically hurls a sword at the elevator, revealing his cunning plan. Using a pole as his defense, Logan forcefully pushes the remaining assassins into the elevator. It becomes evident that the assassins are now trapped inside with Logan, not the other way around. Lifeless bodies as he ascends to another level, instilling fear in the hearts of any remaining adversaries. Meanwhile, Mike grows concerned as Emma fails to answer his call, only to be shocked by the discovery of multiple corpses. As Logan wraps up his business nearby, he unexpectedly encounters the leader of the assassins. Memories flood Logan's mind, fueling his fury as he launches an attack against the leader. However, this leader proves to be different from the rest, defending himself skillfully and even trapping Logan with a contraption around his neck. Swiftly freeing himself, Logan and the leader engage in a fierce battle, evenly matched. Yet Logan taps into his shadow skill once again, delivering a devastating blow. Seizing the opportunity, Logan relentlessly strikes, ultimately bringing the fight to an end. Demanding answers, Logan questions how they found him and his family, and how they recognized his true identity. In a mocking tone, the leader remarks that Logan may alter his appearance, but he can never escape his destiny. Logan then startles this man and uncovers his disguise. Logan remains silent and proceeds to end the leader's life. Afterwards, Logan visits his family, but the sight is too painful for him to bear. Overwhelmed, he collapses to his knees. Logan eventually returns home and drills a hole into a wall. Inside, he retrieves a hidden box containing various items, including a mask. As Logan gazes at a photograph, memories of his family flood his mind once again. Just before Logan sets his family home on fire, we catch a final glimpse of it. Logan watches as his once love-filled and peaceful life burns away and he dons the mask. The fire consumes every last memory, yet Logan's anger remains unabated. Logan was haunted by the memory of his family's tragic death, but this time in his nightmare, his wife called out to him by his real name, Hagen. His family was no longer in disguise and his son screamed out to him. Suddenly, Logan woke up from the horrifying dream only to find himself tied up the assassin leader. Despite being in bad shape, Logan collapsed. To his surprise, someone had arrived. A doctor who was equally shocked, as he thought they would only meet in the afterlife. The doctor questioned why Logan wasn't wearing his disguise, and Logan revealed that the organization had found a way to see through their masking system. The doctor was puzzled by Logan's injuries, but then noticed his arm. Logan had used the secret art of stark awareness, which explained his actions on the roof. The doctor warned Logan never to use it again, as it could cost him his life next time. When he catches a glimpse of Logan's back, he advises him to let go of the idea of a next time, considering he should have perished from the stabbing. Logan is puzzled as to why he managed to survive, and the doctor ponders if there is a guardian angel watching over him. 
It will take a full six days for Logan to recover completely, but all he wants is to regain enough strength to extract information from his captive. The doctor wonders about Logan's plans moving forward, to which Logan responds simply. He will seek out those responsible for his family's murder. The doctor provides Logan with something to aid in his recovery, although it causes him great pain and he loses consciousness. Once Logan regains some strength, he confronts the assassin leader without uttering a word, immediately resorting to violence by thrusting a blade into him. Despite being stabbed multiple times, the man defiantly states that ninjas never break. Logan shocks him by revealing that he is already aware of this fact and continues his assault with the blade. Logan continues his relentless pursuit, unfazed by the passing days. The assassin finally breaks his silence and questions Logan's motives, begging for an end to his suffering. However, Logan remains indifferent to his pleas. Despite more days passing, Logan shows no signs of stopping, inflicting more pain on the assassin. One day, Logan takes it a step further by dousing him in gasoline. The assassin, driven to madness, taunts Logan about the reaction of his wife. He reveals that Logan's son was scared, but his wife's eyes were filled with anger and hatred until the very end. The assassin's words only fuel Logan's determination, as he is told that his wife cried more with each stab of his sword. Logan calmly instructs him to pay close attention as he describes how he plans to etch the image of his family's suffering into his mind forever. He then details the excruciating pain he intends to inflict, emphasizing that death will never bring him peace as he will always live in fear of the Oni that lurks beyond. Logan proceeds to set the man on fire, watching as the assassin screams in agony. Meanwhile, Mike is removed from the investigation involving Joe Logan by order of the higher-ups, who are disturbed by the events at the hospital. With no cameras on the roof and the identity of the blood unknown, Mike mentions that Emma witnessed everything. However, his boss suggests he speak to her again, suspecting a change in her story. Emma, the frustrated with the situation, finds humor in the higher-ups' attempts to conceal the truth. She senses something suspicious and decides to play along while secretly investigating Logan and his family. Her findings reveal that they all use fake identities. Logan, on the other hand, reflects on the device that conceals his true appearance, recalling the promise that it would keep everyone safe. He then sets off on his motorcycle to start his search, only to find that the first place he checks is empty. Logan goes on to travel long distances to check other locations, but all he ever encounters is disappointment. Even the last place he checks turns out to be empty, adding to his growing frustration. That night, some corrupt cops enter a bar and become angry, when the bartender doesn't give them enough money. Logan happens to be sitting right there, and one of the cops decides to ask him if his motorcycle outside is stolen. Logan simply ignores the guy, so the cop asks for his license. Once again, Logan ignores him, prompting the cop to try and grab him. However, Logan swiftly knocks him out. Calmly, Logan leaves the scene, but the other cop attempts to attack him from behind. Logan effortlessly dodges the punch, but the sheer force of Logan's counterswing sends the cop flying. Outside, Logan takes a glance at their cop car and remembers the business card that Mike had given him. The next day, Mike believes that Emma is just joking around, but she insists that she is investigating a crime. Many criminal activities are now taking place in virtual reality, and she needs to complete this job so they can have time to investigate Logan. Emma then mentions that VR technology has been rapidly advancing recently, all thanks to the AUZ company. Suddenly, Mike is taken aback when Logan calls him. He gently removes Emma from VR and gestures for her to trace the call. Mike attempts to uncover Logan's true identity, but Logan has his own set of questions. Logan expresses his desire to converse, prompting Mike to point out that they are already talking. However, this only leads Logan to smash his phone in frustration. Logan calls Mike again, offering him another chance, but warns him to stop playing games. Logan allows Mike to choose the meeting place, so Mike selects a nearby restaurant. The call concludes, leaving Emma disappointed for failing to track Logan as he heads to the restaurant. Advertisements for Aza are seen everywhere claiming that their technology safeguards everyone and is crucial for every aspect of life throughout one's entire lifespan. Logan approaches the restaurant and discreetly surveys the area while waiting for Mike to arrive. Once inside, Mike instructs the owner to step aside, albeit reluctantly, and asks him to direct any delivery drivers to the table near the entrance, where the food orders will be placed. Finally, Logan shows up, but instead of revealing his face, he presents the business card he had given to Mike earlier. Unfortunately, this doesn't satisfy Mike, who insists on seeing Logan's face for confirmation. Feeling frustrated, Logan contemplates leaving, but Mike agrees to have a conversation with him. Logan's main objective is to uncover the person responsible for the recent string of serial murders, and in exchange, he promises to answer any questions Mike may have. Relieved by Logan's willingness to cooperate, Mike suddenly pulls out his gun, indicating that he doesn't negotiate with suspects and orders Logan to kneel down. 
Just at that moment, a delivery man enters the scene and collects one of the orders. Mike ponders why Logan didn't take advantage of the distraction to escape. However, Logan insists on continuing the conversation when suddenly another delivery guy appears and takes another order. With caution, Mike warns Logan not to make any sudden moves as he carefully moves around the table. He firmly declares that Logan is now under arrest. Surprisingly, Logan remains motionless, but Mike's frustration grows when a third delivery guy unexpectedly enters the restaurant. Mike becomes perplexed as he realizes that there are no more orders to be picked up and this new delivery guy launches an attack. Logan swiftly springs into action to defend against the strike, but in the process, his face is exposed, leaving Mike curious about his true identity. As Logan finds himself engaged in a fight, it becomes evident that this assailant is not an ordinary delivery guy. Mike attempts to apprehend both of them, but he is forced to open fire when the imposter delivery guy lunges at him. Logan steps in to save Mike from being harmed, and the intensity of the fight escalates as the attacker reveals an additional set of arms. Logan is pushed back, but he utilizes his shadow jutsu to summon four arms and two heads. The battle rages on, with Logan gaining the upper hand due to his extra limbs. However, as he prepares to finish off his opponent, he realizes that the additional arms belong to another person hidden in a bag. Logan is now facing two deadly opponents, but he manages to hold his ground. After saving Mike once again, Logan throws alcohol at the assassins and sets his swords on fire. The fight intensifies, but Logan takes a swig of alcohol and shoots a fireball at his enemies. Seizing the opportunity, he launches all his blades, pinning one opponent and defeating the other. With the battle finally over, a stunned Mike asks Logan for his identity. Logan cryptically responds with pecking duck, leaving Mike confused as it's just an item on the restaurant's menu. Mike is curious about the whereabouts of the man from the hospital, so Logan decides to use the device to reveal his disguise. To their surprise, Logan himself turns out to be a ninja, just like the fake delivery guys and the hospital staff. Suddenly, they are forced to take cover as a group of attackers shoots at them from outside. The situation escalates when one of the attackers fires a rocket at them, causing the entire place to explode before fleeing. Logan disappears, but we see him watching Mike from above. Mike inspects his chest and notices that the ninja's blade effortlessly cut through his body armor without a scratch. Puzzled, Mike wonders who could have created such a powerful weapon. As they ponder this, an advertisement for Oza technology appears behind them, catching their attention. Meanwhile, a man named Zai informs his master that their target is still alive, much to the master's dismay as he utters Huygen's name. In an art museum across the country, we witness the exhibits being painted red with blood as multiple killings take place simultaneously tonight. A man is being whisked away by his security guards outside, ensuring his safety by taking him as far away as possible to escape the impending danger. It seems like they might have escaped the calamity, but as the man sits in the backseat of the car, he prays fervently to God for protection from the demons chasing him. Moments later, wrinkly white hands emerge from behind the car seats, snapping the necks of the guards and then forcefully disconnecting the man from life. The car spirals out of control, crashing into a tree and bursting into flames, claiming the lives of everyone inside. The mastermind behind this assassination plot, a bald man, eagerly awaits his next target, Logan. Later, he enjoys a fancy dinner with his boss, revealing that he is not actually bald, but his haircut is so atrocious that he might as well be. He informs his client that his previous assignment was incredibly dull, as he couldn't even muster any excitement while witnessing the bodies turn to ashes. He craves something more exhilarating, so he inquires about the tedious tasks of others in hopes of finding some enjoyment. However, Yamaji dismisses his ramblings and emphasizes that his job is not meant for amusement, he must eliminate whoever he is instructed to kill. Realizing he started off on the wrong foot, the bald little man changes the subject and questions Yamaji about the necessity of investing resources in pursuing the defecting ninjas. Yamaji insists that it is crucial to take action, as these defectors are no longer considered ninjas and must be eradicated to safeguard their secret arts from being shared with the public. The bald little man reluctantly admits that Logan, a highly skilled ninja and attempting target, catches his attention. Logan is renowned for his mastery of numerous fighting arts and his merciless approach to eliminating his targets. Now the bald little man has the honor of personally killing him. Yamaji informs him that they have previously managed to kill Logan, but he somehow resurrected himself using secret ninja arts. These ancient techniques were only known to the old ninjas, which excites the bald little man even more to confront him. The organization is determined to ensure Logan is finished off properly this time and preparations are underway. However, the bald little men believe it would be more satisfying if they could handle the killing themselves, as they are eager to have a chance at him. As he starts to leave on his booster seat, he suddenly remembers something he wanted to ask about and inquires about another ninja known as the Reaper. We catch a glimpse of the Reaper, who has just defeated a group of ninjas and now faces his former master. The master calls out to Zai, 
criticizing his violent actions and emphasizing that what he does is nothing more than mindless violence. Zai has been eliminating the renegade ninjas on behalf of the organization, who were once his allies. However, the organization is deeply corrupt, which is why they are going to such lengths to eliminate the defected ninjas, out of fear. The former master readies his sword for the upcoming battle, declaring that those ninjas who, like him, chose to stand by their principles and defect, will not be defeated by their enemies. The fact that they were unable to kill Logan serves as evidence of this. The tension escalates as the two lock eyes, eagerly anticipating the first move. Breaking the stalemate, the master unleashes a devastating gust of wind, seemingly impossible to evade. However, to everyone's surprise, Zai remains unscathed, emerging from the dust with his usual, nonchalant demeanor. The master is bewildered, unable to comprehend how Zai managed to dodge the attack. Nevertheless, he remains undeterred, ready to launch another strike. Yet, as he prepares to strike, he notices something peculiar. Zai is no longer wielding his sword. The sword, mysteriously, now impales the master's body, shattering his mask. Despite his defeat, the master cannot even muster anger, as he was defeated before he even realized it. With a resigned tone, he mutters, I suppose I'm done for, as he collapses to the ground, contemplating the day when Zai will join him in the depths of hell. Shifting gears to the meeting with Yamaji, he ponders that the Reaper must have intentions to confront someone as formidable as Logan. Although this may be true, Yamaji has already issued a strict order forbidding any engagement with Logan, leaving no room for a fight. In the meantime, over at the police department, we witness the unfortunate situation involving Mike and the Chinese restaurant owner. Following the chaos that erupted during their meeting, the police department took advantage of the situation and falsely implicated the owner in a Chinese money laundering scheme. Despite knowing the accusations are baseless, Mike finds himself in a predicament where he must comply with upper management's orders to protect his job. Unfortunately, there seems to be no way out for Mike, and soon his boss confronts him about it. They decide to take a break from the office and head to a serene lake in the nearby park. It is there that his boss advises him to steer clear of this matter. Digging deeper will only lead to trouble, and with retirement just a few years away, it's best for Mike to keep a low profile and enjoy his remaining days by indulging in fishing and savoring a glass of whiskey. Mike's boss is so generous that he plans to surprise him with a top-notch fishing rod. However, Mike isn't exactly thrilled about it because he suspects it might be an AUZA product, and he's determined to uncover the truth. In an attempt to dissuade Mike from meddling where he shouldn't, his boss resorts to an unconventional tactic. He informs Mike that he doesn't need to come to work anymore, implying that he's too exhausted to make sound judgments. Nevertheless, Mike isn't being fired, he's simply on paid leave until his retirement day. This is the best advice he can offer as someone who was once his partner. In another location, Logan is seen in an abandoned building, blacksmithing and hammering away while lost in thought. Memories of his deceased family flood his mind, causing him to vomit in a corner. After the panic attack subsides, he regains his composure and notices someone approaching. A car pulls up and Mike steps out with a box of items. He grumbles about the remote location being difficult to find with GPS, but Logan appreciates the seclusion. The two enter the building and discuss the unique alloy used in the blades of the attackers from the restaurant. Upon analysis, they realize the alloy is produced by AUZA, indicating a connection between the attackers and the ninjas. Mike mentions that he will conduct a bit of investigation to see if there's any information available, but AUZA is extremely dangerous as they seem to have control over the entire FBI. They are now attempting to silence him. Lovin informs Mike that they were responsible for the death of his family, so he plans to seek revenge on each and every one of them. This implies that Lovin intends to eliminate them all. However, Mike clarifies that he is still committed to justice, and if necessary, they will have to apprehend Logan for his actions. Nevertheless, there are numerous corrupt individuals at the FBI that need to be dealt with first. Mike proposes that they establish a truce to assist each other in achieving their objectives, even though he never imagined he would be collaborating with someone as shady as an actual ninja. Logan hands him a mug and pours a drink from his flask to mark their alliance. As Mike takes a sip, he realizes that it's not alcohol, which raises concerns about poison. Logan assures him that it's just an energy drink. Moving forward, Mike mentions that he has obtained a lead on AUZA, capturing Logan's interest. He mentions that someone knowledgeable is on their way here. The door creaks open, making him think it's them, but it turns out to be the duck they'll be eating soon. That night, Emma finally arrives, but Mike is upset with her for being late when she was supposed to meet them at noon. She explains she had to wait for a chance to leave work and then pick up her baby to come all the way out here. Mike doesn't see the big deal about her car, but Emma takes offense, pointing out that the car he brought is a piece of junk. Mike admits it, but defends that it got him here on time. Lovett admires Emma's car, recognizing it as one of the best cars designed by famous designers in the 20th century. 
Emma is thrilled that someone else appreciates her car as expected of a ninja. Levin is worried that she knows, but Mike reassures him that Emma is a trusted friend who also analyzed the weapons for them, so she needs to be there. She has always had a deep fascination with ninjas, so she bombards Logan with a barrage of questions. However, Mike interrupts and suggests they stay on topic as their purpose is to discuss AUZA. Undeterred, she insists they all get into the car because she has something important to show them. Despite the cramped space, they manage to squeeze into the back seats. Emma asks them to bear with a tightness for a moment while she reveals why she is so invested in this car. It turns out she has transformed it into a movie computer granting her access to a wealth of information from all around the world. Emma has extensively researched AUZA and discovered their involvement in military weapons, telecommunications, and entertainment. They seem to have their hands in almost every imaginable technology, and it's safe to say that almost everyone in the world uses something created by them. However, being a multinational trillion-dollar company, AUZA is not without its dark rumors. Curiously, every individual who has posed a threat to AUZA's reputation, whether a rival company leader or a journalist, has met an untimely demise in mysterious accidents. In recent news, the leader of a conservative party in his country, who vehemently opposed foreign companies doing business there, had his ruling overturned after he died in a car accident. The person who replaced him, definitely not an AUZA spy, is now advocating for domestic technology improvement in partnership with AUZA. It seems like all these convenient deaths are raising suspicions, and Emma is convinced that ninjas are behind it. Mike is concerned about the potential dangers of going up against a giant company and a ninja army. Meanwhile, at an AUZA research facility, they have just started testing a new generator they've been developing with their wireless power systems also nearing perfection. The AUZA is on track to becoming a common name in the tech world, aiming to monopolize all tech industries. The company president returns to his office after meeting with researchers, only to be confronted by Yamaji with a grievance. Yamaji believes Auze agents targeted a drive-by because he wanted to test new weapons, but Yamaji doesn't appreciate the interference in his business despite being partners. Logan and the team investigate the figurative center of AUZA to unravel the mystery of the ninja's involvement. The headquarters in AUZA city is where they test experimental inventions. As they sift through information, Logan suddenly pushes Mike aside as a sword pierces through the car's roof. Emma starts driving in an attempt to escape their attacker but he continues to thrust the sword into the roof of the car. Mike attempts to shoot at the attacker, but it doesn't seem to deter him much. Logan decides to take matters into his own hands and stabs the guy. They believe they are safe until a truck crashes into them, sending them careening off the road. Logan is the first to regain consciousness, while the other two remain unconscious from the impact. The battle is far from over as the attacker stands before them, firing spikes. Logan quickly pulls Mike to safety and jumps out of the car to confront the masked attacker. A fierce battle ensues as they race through the city streets. Eventually, they find themselves on the roof of a building, where the attacker reveals robotic tentacles. Despite being struck in the back mid-air, Logan uses his ninjutsu skills to create extra arms and grabs hold of the tentacles, hurling the attacker around. However, the attacker has more tricks up his sleeve, launching missiles at Logan. Nevertheless, Logan skillfully evaded every attack while airborne and capitalized on the opportunity to swiftly impale the assassin's head. He then dragged the lifeless body to the rooftop's edge before removing the camera from it. The bald little man observed the entire sequence of events, prompting Logan to assertively convey his intention to pursue him next. As the bald little man finished his meal, Logan prepared to depart while paramedics attended to Mike and Emma. However, just as he was about to leave, his throwaway phone rang, and upon hearing the voice on the other end, Logan appeared to recognize it. The voice informs him that he has taken the liberty of encrypting the call, ensuring that there is no need to worry about being traced. Curious, Logan inquires about the identity of the voice, but it seems that getting an answer won't be so simple. The voice then discloses that he is aware of Logan's destination, Oza City, and warns him about its formidable, multi-layered security system. It would be nearly impossible for Logan to infiltrate the city alone. Hence, the voice offers his assistance in Logan's infiltration. Logan, being cautious, hesitates to trust a voice he has only encountered over the phone. However, the voice reveals that he is also an exiled ninja, facing a similar predicament as Logan. Therefore, it is in their mutual interest to cooperate. The voice proposes sending a location for a future meeting, leaving the decision of trust in Logan's hands. Mike awakens in a hospital room following the car accident and unfolds the note he had received from his daughter some time ago. Several years ago, he found himself on an undercover mission alongside a fellow agent when his wife began incessantly calling him. Although he could have easily answered, he believed his duty to precedence, instructed his partner to remain focused on the investigation, despite the uncertainty surrounding the eyewitness report. 
The day came to an end, and unfortunately, he had no luck in finding anything. As he returned to the office, he finally made the decision to answer his wife's call. Little did he know, what he was about to hear would change his life forever. Tragically, his daughter had been involved in a car accident caused by a random guy who was asleep at the wheel. The reports were devastating. His wife was inconsolable and understandably upset with him. For not answering his phone during such a serious situation. That day, he lost both his daughter and his wife, leaving him with only the comfort of a drawing his daughter had made for him while she was still alive. Lost in his thoughts, Logan suddenly appeared around the corner, interrupting him. Mike could never get used to how ninjas seemed to appear out of nowhere, but he knew Logan had something important to share. They decided to call in Emma, as Logan mentioned a guy who claimed he could offer some help with the Oz mission. Mike wasn't entirely convinced that this guy was another ninja like Logan, but he did possess information that only the ninjas from the old organization knew. It had been a secret since they arrived in this country. Emma's findings indicate that the man is well informed about Oz's security system, which is extremely robust. It would be nearly impossible to bypass it undetected, so if it does end up being a trap, he may have no choice but to eliminate all threats. Mike is not happy about Logan's disturbing admission, but he decides to set that aside for now. The main focus is figuring out how they can enter Oz's city. Mike knows that Oz is keeping an eye on him based on his last conversation with his boss. Emma suggests that they should give up as it might be the safest option. She had previously mentioned that infiltrating Oz's headquarters would be the best way to uncover their secrets, but she never claimed it would be possible. Mike pleads with her to reconsider, but Emma is not a magician, just a tech-savvy girl. Unfortunately, she can't do anything about it. However, they still have some options left. Emma has discovered a group of dark web users who have been monitoring Oz's activities. According to their findings, Oz is planning to dominate the world by creating weapons of mass destruction. At first, Mike dismisses it as mere conspiracy theories, but he realizes that it's better to be safe than sorry. Emma finds the admin of the dark web group, who claims to be one of Oz's former researchers. However, he's quite far away, so it will take some time to reach him. Mike reassures that the distance won't be an issue, but insists on going alone. He appreciates Emma's help, but doesn't want her risking her life. Mike, having lost everything he cared for, feels he has nothing left to lose. Emma is determined to not give up, especially when they are so close to obtaining information on Aza. If she plays her cards right, she might even be able to swipe some of their cutting-edge data and make a fortune on the black market. With everyone on board, they decide to stick together. Logan stands up to leave, but not before Mike jokingly asks if he ever revealed his ninja identity to his wife. Logan chuckles, explaining that his wife was a ninja too, breaking the tradition of emotional distance among ninjas. This revelation makes Mike rethink his priorities, realizing that even a skilled ninja like Logan values family over work. The head of Aza is now determined to take down Logan, recognizing him as a formidable fighter. The little head teases him for obsessing over Logan, but he doesn't care about the teasing as long as he obtains the crucial data he desires. Actually, he would even go as far as having his assistant provide him with any necessary assistance, no matter what it takes. Putting jokes aside, Oz's director inquires about the plan for Logan's arrival, but he is assured that Oz's city is completely impenetrable, so there's no need to worry. He dislikes it when people use the phrase 100% secure, because it practically invites someone to break through. However, before continuing, he checks with Big D if he's paying attention to the meeting. Big D is definitely listening, but he has more important matters to attend to, like ensuring his hairstyle stays fresh. If Logan ruins his new fade, he'll personally make sure Logan regrets it. The little guy tries to crack a joke about Big D's large banana, but Yamaji is tired of his nonsense and uses a forceful gesture to silence him. Yamaji emphasizes that everyone knows how dangerous Logan is at this point, so the plan remains unchanged. They need to understand Logan's technique in order to defeat him, and for now, they can leave Mike alone since he isn't much of a threat. They shouldn't complicate things more than necessary. The head of Oz's dislike for being ordered around is well known, yet he surprisingly agrees with everything Yamaji just said. With that, the meeting comes to an end. On the way back, Oz turns to his assistant Dilly and curiously asks her how far she thinks Logan will be able to venture into the city before meeting his demise. It's not that Oz feels threatened by Logan, but rather he is genuinely excited to witness a ninja in full action. He hopes to gather valuable data from this encounter. In the meantime, the Reaper informs Yamaji that he is ready to pursue Logan immediately if instructed. However, Yamaji advises him to wait as he intends to send the others first to compel Logan to disclose his technique. The organization views their deaths as insignificant, and it's just a matter of time before they achieve their ultimate objectives. Meanwhile, his operatives have successfully infiltrated a building, eliminating all guards and securing top-secret government documents before disappearing into the night. 
A flashback reveals the night Logan was recognized by the ninja organization and bestowed with his ninja name, symbolizing their exceptional ninja skills and strength. From that point on, they were known as Logan, Zai, and Mary, but there was more to come during their ceremony, special techniques that were to remain confidential, even among themselves. After the ceremony concluded, they all gathered for the evening. Mary appeared genuinely happy to have a name, but Zai struggled to adjust to this new reality. Having a name meant they were no longer disposable ninjas who vanish upon death. Now they could always remember each other and the strong bond they had formed. To mark the occasion, the three of them shared a drink and laughed together, even though Logan accidentally choked on his. Some time passed, and they were assigned a mission where they had to infiltrate the house of an important person, after several random security guards had been killed. The man attempted to shoot them, but we all know that guns are practically useless against them. In the end, he was stabbed through the head as they entered the bedroom. At that moment, Mary noticed something in the closet and went to investigate, only to find the man's wife and child hiding there. Mary was faced with a difficult decision. The usual procedure dictated that any witnesses should be eliminated immediately. However, Mary found herself questioning whether she could bring herself to harm an innocent child. In that moment of hesitation, the woman took advantage and fired a barrage of bullets at Mary. Despite her injuries, Mary fought back, resorting to stabbing the woman in the neck. Logan arrived to check on her, just as additional security guards started firing in their direction. In a swift move, he threw a smoke grenade and leaped out of the window, carrying her with him. Later, he emerged from the water with Mary, who had been unconscious for quite some time. Logan immediately performed CPR until she regained consciousness. Seeking refuge in a nearby cave, Mary insisted that he leave her behind for the sake of the mission. However, Logan adamantly refused, unwilling to abandon her. Overwhelmed by the shame of failing her mission, Mary contemplated ending her own life with a gun. Thankfully, Logan noticed just in time and managed to intercept the blade mere inches away from her neck. Despite the ninja co's warning against emotional attachments, Mary reminded him of their duty. Nevertheless, Logan had already made up his mind to break that code from the very day they met. After sharing a kiss, Zai discovers them cuddled up in a corner of the cave. This marked the beginning of their troubles with the organization. Fast forward to the present, Mike is attempting to reach Logan as he heads to meet the source they discover on the dark web. Simultaneously, his boss calls, expressing dissatisfaction with Mike's recent activities. Despite this, Mike is given the freedom to pursue his own interests, since he currently has no assigned cases. However, Emma's situation is different as she still needs to report to her direct boss. This means she can no longer accompany him, which is understandable since Mike didn't want to involve her in the first place. But before they part ways, she kindly asks if he happens to be hungry. Meanwhile, Logan receives a message from the mysterious exiled ninja, who expresses his satisfaction with Logan's decision to accept his help. Initially, he wants Logan to fully comprehend how the AZA security system operates. It relies solely on their internally developed technology and proactively checks if approaching vehicles have the necessary permission to enter. If any unauthorized guests are detected through the SACAN, the drones will swiftly engage in defensive action. Furthermore, there is an electromagnetic barrier covering the airspace above the city, allowing only rain to pass through. This means Logan will need to enter through the underground facility used to manage all the sensors built throughout the city. The area is heavily guarded with security cameras, laser traps, and armed mercenaries patrolling the sections. To ensure a smooth operation, it is crucial to avoid any combat at all costs. If he successfully passes them, he will eventually reach the city's barrier. The voice will then work his magic and deactivate it for five seconds, allowing him to enter. During dinner, Emma and Mike enjoy a meal together. Emma expresses her gratitude to Mike for teaching her a lot, even though she may not be the best mentor. She wants him to take care of his health, while they are temporarily working apart. Meanwhile, Logan reaches the outskirts of Aza City and is told that the voice has hacked into the internal security cameras. They estimate they have about eight minutes before being detected. Logan starts moving through the underground facility, following instructions to avoid the hired mercenaries. He encounters a laser security system and skillfully performs precise gymnastics to avoid setting off any alarms. However, a droplet of sweat escapes from his forehead, accidentally activating the laser and completely sabotaging the entire plan. Now, they are fully aware of his presence and swiftly dispatch soldiers to apprehend him. Logan efficiently handles the soldiers and keeps running until he reaches the barrier. Just as the barrier is about to be dismantled, Zai unexpectedly appears before him, and the two lock eyes in a tense standoff. Logan claims that Mary is dead and wonders if Yamaji ordered her killing, so he can seek revenge against the responsible party. Zai opts not to respond directly, but warns Logan that he cannot hide forever. Eventually, he will face the consequences for defying the organization. Mike arrives at the address of the former Oza researcher he was searching for, but the place appears too dilapidated to house someone who worked for a powerful company like AUZA, 
despite his employment there. Emma informs Mike that the researcher wasn't highly regarded and didn't contribute significantly to their advancements. However, if he went through the trouble of finding a hideout in this rundown place, he must possess some useful information. Though skeptical, Mike decides to proceed and meet the guy as Emma thinks it's a good idea. Emma also warns him that the FBI is likely monitoring his activities closely, so he should only contact her in case of an emergency. Afterwards, Mike steps into the deserted arcade and discovers a man slumped over a table, completely intoxicated. Taking a seat beside him, Mike waits until the man finally notices his presence. With a knowing smile, Mike reveals that he recognizes him as Jason Cardenas. Meanwhile, back in Aza City, they have realized that a system error caused the barrier to temporarily go down for five seconds. Logan's swift reaction during that brief window suggests that it may have been a planned move rather than a mere coincidence. Although they are still unsure about the cause of the error, there is suspicion that Logan is receiving assistance from someone within Aza City. The younger members of the group are not concerned with the specifics as long as they can still count on Logan. However, Yamaji advises sticking to the original plan as launching a random attack would be reckless. In response, the younger member proposes an alternative plan suggesting that they allow Logan to enter the city without resistance. With all their forces present, it wouldn't matter what secret technique Logan possesses if he becomes overwhelmed before he can utilize it. Some people are against the idea due to potential negative consequences in AUZ, but Joseph is excited about witnessing an intense battle. He volunteers to take responsibility for any damage caused since they have authorization. Dilly proposes leading Logan to the test room. Meanwhile, Logan is in hiding in a tunnel when he receives a message from his contact informing him that the executives have agreed to let him enter the city peacefully. However, they plan to ambush him with their best ninjas so he must not be deceived or he will be in danger. The voice advises him to make his move at 7 p.m. during a parade that will serve as a distraction. Moving on to Mike and Jason, Mike asks if Jason is trying to extort money from him by threatening to involve him with Aza. Mike clarifies that he only needs help with an investigation, and if Jason cooperates, he will not bother him again. Jason, however, is more concerned about the fact that Mike was able to locate him in the first place. If Mike was able to gather information about this place, it's only a matter of time before Auze discovers his whereabouts as well. Taking a stroll around the room, Mike notices an old game positioned in the center. Surprisingly, it's not the game that catches his interest, but rather what lies beneath it. He kindly asks Jason to move it, eager to uncover what secrets lie underneath. Meanwhile, in Auze City, the festival has just commenced, and Logan is making his move to enter the city. All eyes are on him as the organization leaders anticipate his arrival. As he ventures into the sewer, he finds himself confronted by an army of ninjas. On the other hand, Mike successfully makes his way into Jason's secret room, where he has meticulously set up an entire server room to cater to his hacking needs. As he settles down in his chair, he starts venting about his plans to bring Aza down after the way they mistreated him. According to official records, he supposedly resigned willingly, but the truth is that the company harassed him relentlessly, until he had no choice but to quit. While he empathizes with Jason's frustrations, his behavior suggests that he might have been fired due to his personality. Nevertheless, the fact that he orchestrated this elaborate revenge scheme against Aza demonstrates his remarkable expertise in his field. Jason is almost certain that Aza is involved in some shady business, but unfortunately, nobody believes him when he voices his suspicions. Determined to expose the truth, he takes it upon himself to gather evidence against them and make it public. Perhaps people doubt him because he comes across as a bit eccentric. However, Mike, who has first-hand experience with Oz's unlawful activities, trusts Jason's claims. He shares Jason's determination to bring Oza down and asks if Jason can hack into their servers. Initially hesitant due to Oza's formidable security measures, Jason worries about being traced if he attempts to infiltrate their systems. Nevertheless, Mike assures him that he will be kept safe. Meanwhile, in Logan's thrilling escapade, he fearlessly battles his way through an army of ninjas, skillfully using explosives for cover and effortlessly slicing through more adversaries. With remarkable agility, he even leaps over a group of ninjas and cleverly uses one as a human shield. Logan fills his mouth with more explosives and then disappears into the darkness before the bombs detonate. Jason is using his computer skills to try and access their servers, but unfortunately, he can't take down all their servers. Mike reassures him that they only need to gather information from the server. After Jason successfully gains access, they discover some research reports from the technical department's servers, but it's not the illegal data they were searching for. They continue searching until they come across the system source code, which turns out to be unhelpful. Jason attempts to look elsewhere, but despite his best efforts, his access is repeatedly denied. Eventually, he gives up on accessing the top secret files and decides to check one of the internal servers for any overlooked files. Luckily, 
he finds a folder named Bound that contains a list of fake names for the spy operatives being planted in organizations worldwide. However, Mike notices something alarming. Emma's name is on that list. Before they can process this revelation, alarms start blaring as Aza has detected their hacking attempt and blocked Jason's access. Jason's security system also alerts him to the presence of armed soldiers who are pursuing them. As they enter the server room, guns at the ready, Mike and Jason take cover behind a counter. In a clever move, Mike switches on the game machines, diverting the mercenaries' attention towards them. Seizing the opportunity, Mike and Jason make a quick escape to Mike's car and speed away before the mercenaries can shoot at them. The ease with which they were found suggests that the FBI may have informed Aza about their plans, leading to the deployment of mercenaries to eliminate both Jason and him. Meanwhile, Logan finds himself facing Oz's mercenaries as well. Unlike Mike, Logan is a formidable opponent, and when a smoke canister is thrown their way, the outcome remains unseen. However, it is safe to assume that those three mercenaries are no longer a threat, as Logan manages to take them down with well-aimed spikes to their throats. While Logan is dealing with the mercenaries, Mike and Jason are desperately fleeing from the pursuing mercenaries, fearing for their lives. Mike attempts to make a call amidst Jason's panic about their hideout being compromised. Unfortunately, Emma is not answering, but they have more pressing matters at hand as the mercenaries are closing in on them. The mercenaries start shooting at their car, but Jason can't drive any faster due to the car being a complete wreck. In a bold move, Mike decides to hang out of the window and provide cover fire while Jason spots a truck approaching. Jason comes up with a brilliant plan to almost crash into the truck, causing it to take out the mercenary cars instead. One of the mercenary cars is successfully eliminated, but the other is still pursuing them. Thinking quickly, Mike instructs Jason to slow down and get behind the remaining car. As Jason follows his lead, Mike takes aim and skillfully headshots the mercenaries with his first shot. However, their celebration is short-lived as they still have to deal with the driver of the car. Mike fires a shot through the window, causing the car to lose control and crash. Heads back to Logan, walking up to the two security guards who had just witnessed him take down an entire army. Realizing they are not paid enough to handle the situation, they wisely decide to leave him alone. Logan enters the elevator, heading to the top floor, reminiscing about his family and the reason behind his actions. Upon arriving in a large room, he finds himself surrounded by the little head and tech suit, which clearly isn't compensating for anything. The others are impressed by his progress, but this is where his journey ends. Joseph observes the unfolding events from his home gym, while Yamaji watches from a helicopter circle in the test center. When Logan spots Yamaji, he charges towards him, only to be body-checked by a ninja. Despite almost getting his face pounded in, he manages to dodge at the last moment and counter with a kick. Unfortunately, the armor is too tough, preventing any damage, and he ends up being thrown into the air and hammered by Big D. The jumping won't stop anytime soon, so Logan relies on his secret art to hide his presence. They expected him to attack, but instead, he throws some bombs at the window and uses a grappling hook to chase after Yamaji. However, as he reaches the top, the line gets shot off, causing Logan to fall to the ground. His spotlight is now on him, but he takes a moment to think about his family before accepting that he might die here. However, if he's going down, he's not going down without a fight. He prepares to use his special technique again, even though he knows it will eventually kill him. Removing the needle from his arm, he stabs himself. But in that same moment, he gets hit by Dilly, and is sent flying towards the others. They were ready to attack again, but Logan turns the tables mid-fight by stabbing one of them in the head. Unfortunately, the armor protects the enemy from fatal damage. To block their vision, Logan throws another smoke grenade, and with his increased speed, they can't keep track of his movements at all. Logan relentlessly stabs them, desperately searching for a vulnerability in their armor. However, it seems impenetrable thus far. Determined to break through, Logan prepares to unleash another one of his secret techniques. Yet, before he can complete the move, he is suddenly pierced through the chest by a barrage of spikes. From that moment on, everything goes downhill for Logan. He endures a series of brutal kicks from his opponent, resembling a soccer ball being tossed around. Eventually, he becomes almost lifeless. Just when it appears to be the end, a ray of hope emerges as Zai arrives on the scene. Despite Logan's feeble attempts to fight back, he lacks the strength to do much more than throw weak punches. Zai forcefully knocks him to the ground and declares that it's time to put an end to everything. With his sword in hand, Zai raises it, preparing to behead Logan. Resigned to his fate, Logan no longer possesses the will to resist. However, just before the fatal blow can be delivered, the ninja in the pink suit intervenes, saving him. No one can believe the shocking turn of events. Just as others were about to intervene and prevent her from aiding Logan, she activates an EMP device she had planted earlier, disabling their suits. 
Swiftly, she seizes Logan and leaps off the edge of the roof, simultaneously hurling a bomb at Zai to deter him from pursuing them. Meanwhile, on Mike's side, we witness Jason's valiant attempt to carry him to safety after being shot. The severity of his injuries remains uncertain. As for Logan, he is barely conscious and aware of the gravity of the situation. Even if he manages to survive, thanks to this mysterious ninja what lies ahead for him now that his quest for revenge has ended in failure. Zai and the rest of the group approach the edge and witness another shocking action from their teammate. However, the little head doesn't seem to care about the assistance the pink ninja provided to Logan, as it only means there are now two targets to pursue. The media has already started covering up the situation, claiming that the explosions from last night were merely an accidental occurrence. Nevertheless, the operatives on the ground receive a coded message, alerting them about the betrayal of one of their ninjas and her current pursuit of Logan. Yamaji wants everyone to ensure that both the Pink Ninja and Logan are unable to escape from Aza City. Sometime later, Logan regains consciousness inside a capsule. Before he can make any movements, the female ninja from earlier advises him to take time to heal, despite the advantage of the Nana machine technology. She understands that he must be curious as to why she saved him in the first place. However, everything starts to make sense when she removes her mask and reveals herself as Emma. She expresses regret for deceiving him about her identity and admits that the face he sees isn't her real one. Logan questions if she was instructed to approach him, and she confirms his suspicions. She discloses that the chieftain had assigned her a special mission related to Logan's supposed death and resurrection through a secret technique. Her task was to uncover the truth behind this technique and to assume that Logan could revive himself endlessly. Secret techniques are typically reserved for combat situations, so she simply wanted to observe him closely under the alias of Emma. However, she drops another bombshell by revealing that she is also the mysterious voice who aided him in infiltrating Aza. When he inquires if Mike is a ninja too, she denies it, clarifying that he is just an ordinary civilian. He can't comprehend why she would willingly follow the organization's orders while secretly plotting against them. She clarifies that she has her own objectives in all of this, but she can't achieve them alone. Furthermore, she warns him that if he were to confront the lieutenants again, he would surely meet his demise. Their battle suits are far too powerful for him to face as he has already learned firsthand that his techniques are ineffective against them. However, all hope is not lost as he can level the playing field by turning their own technology against them. Meanwhile, back at headquarters, Yamaji receives news that one of the experimental battle suits they had stored has gone missing. It appears that the traitor had planned ahead and stole it while saving Logan. Nonetheless, Yamaji remains confident that they can still handle Logan, even if he possesses a new suit. Meanwhile, all of his agents are conducting a thorough search of the area while in pursuit of the fugitives. Emma is currently engrossed in her work typing away on her computer to customize the Gusoku gear specifically for Logan. This gear is designed to seamlessly incorporate various ninja techniques, blending 600 years of ninja expertise with the cutting-edge technology of Aza. Interestingly, Emma was also part of the development team for these suits, giving her an in-depth understanding of their capabilities. She just needs to add a few final touches to ensure that Logan can utilize its full potential. However, time is of the essence as they are racing against the clock, knowing that the organization may discover them first, putting their lives in grave danger. As the organization persists in their relentless search, in another place, Mike awakens in a cozy bed next to a frantic Jason, who scolds him for failing to provide the promised protection. Still recovering from being shot, Mike simply turns over in bed, feeling the lingering effects. However, Jason reveals that he has been unconscious for a whole 10 days. Jason managed to arrange for one of his doctor friends to come and treat Mike's injuries, but it came with a hefty price tag for Mike's wallet. Luckily, they are currently staying in a luxurious beach house that doesn't belong to Jason, and the owners won't be returning anytime soon. So for the time being, they should be safe hiding out here. Mike realizes that if they were found and attacked so quickly, it means that someone has been following him since before he even left the city. This also indicates that they must be getting closer to uncovering something that Aza wants to keep hidden. Emma is still working on completing the battle suit, but she lacks a suitable power source to get it running. The air reactors, which would normally serve as its power source, are currently all still in the Aza HQ. However, going back there without the suit would be extremely dangerous, almost like a death sentence. This leaves her with only one other option. Meanwhile, Logan is reminiscing about a past moment he shared with his wife, drawing inspiration from something she said back then. At HQ, the operatives have finished searching all the zones except one. They realize that the power consumption in that particular zone has been 10 times higher than usual, suggesting that heavy equipment must be in operation there. This leads them to believe that they have narrowed down the location of the traders. Big D volunteers himself to handle the situation as he thinks it will be an exciting challenge. 
Emma has just completed the installation of the armor plating on the armor, but there is still a significant amount of work remaining. The upgraded Gusoku armor known as Kamui is a completely new design that has been built from scratch. Its purpose is to achieve the highest level of battle performance imaginable. Unlike other suits, Kamui operates differently as it requires a direct connection to the user's brain. This allows it to immediately respond to the user's mental image, resulting in an incredibly fast reaction time that surpasses any other suit. The suit's strength and speed are enhanced based on the intensity of the user's visualization of their actions. However, in order for this to work, the suit needs to be put into a deep sleep state. During this state, the user will be unable to wake up even if they were to be stabbed through the heart again. She is determined to make it crystal clear to him that if he dies again, he won't be coming back. She has first-hand knowledge of this because she was the one who granted him the ability to be revived. Displaying a mask, she discloses that she was present during the initial attack on his family. By utilizing her own unique technique, she managed to freeze his cells by striking a specific pathway, enabling him to survive a fatal wound to the heart. However, this technique can only be used once, as the pathways will be permanently sealed. Logan, upon learning this, is consumed by anger, wondering why she didn't save his wife and son as well. He wouldn't have been content with sacrificing himself to ensure their survival. Emma remains silent, opting to activate the neural link which renders Logan unconscious. Suddenly, she receives an alert indicating that her hideout has been breached, and a glance at the security camera reveals that the intruders are not numerous, but a few of his ninjas are making their way towards her. As he stumbles upon a door along the path, he decides to use a laser tool to cut through it. However, upon breaking through, he is shocked to find a room filled with explosives that Emma had cleverly placed as a decoy. Emma is relieved that they fell for her trap, giving her more time to finish Logan's synchronization. But her relief is short-lived as the little head manages to track her down. He inquired about your method of locating her, and despite his small stature, he possessed a sharp mind. He reasoned that due to the scarcity of their presence in the city, they must have either perished or been in constant motion. Knowing that they couldn't have died, he decided to monitor every vehicle in the city. Since she went into hiding, only one vehicle remained in perpetual motion. Logan's suit synchronization rate is still at 10%, so she must figure out a way to delay him until Logan is prepared. In a desperate attempt to save Logan from the imminent blast, she dashes towards her computer. With lightning speed, she activates a program that causes the truck they're in to tip over. This clever move buys her enough time to slip into her own pink suit. Determined, she steps out of the truck to confront the little head. The little head, filled with anticipation, is thrilled to finally have someone to fight in a similar suit. He swiftly retrieves one of his add-ons, ready to engage in combat. Meanwhile, Mike tries to reach Emma, but she doesn't answer for obvious reasons. He informs Jason that their next step is to locate all the individuals on the list. However, Jason struggles to comprehend how he's expected to accomplish such a task. With his cover blown, going home is no longer an option for him. Without access to his computers, he feels helpless as he can no longer hack into anything. Mike isn't really knowledgeable about computers, so he can't offer much help. Emma, on the other hand, is quite capable when it comes to dealing with computers. Mike, however, knows exactly where to find a high-quality computer. Meanwhile, in Oza City, the conflict between Emma and the little head is escalating. Emma seems to be at a disadvantage, but she still has some tricks up her sleeve. She uses virtual keyboards and hacks into Oza systems to control machines. Emma then launches attacks using trucks and drones against the little head, calling him out for not living up to the ninja standards. The little head doesn't deny her accusations as they are true. In fact, he arrived at their location without informing the organization. Emma continues to criticize him, but he actually enjoys the fight even more because of it. He jumps into the air, ready to land on her, but just before that could happen, she does something to distort his vision. As a result, his punch misses its target. As he gets back up, he suddenly sees multiple Emmas, realizing that she must have taken control of his suit's optic sensors. Determined to find the real Emma, he starts running, but the first few he encounters turn out to be mere illusions. In the midst of his distraction, the real Emma sneaks up behind him and pierces through his suit. He manages to shake her off and attempts to punch her, but she skillfully evades his attack and blends back into a crowd of her illusions. Despite feeling overwhelmed, he continues to smile as a timer on his display counts down. Taking action, he forcefully slams his fist into the ground using a pulsar device with flames to eliminate all the Emma clones, leaving only the real one. As the timer reaches zero, recharging stations emerge from the ground. However, as Emma tries to reach one, the little head throws bombs, destroying the stations while he himself gets recharged. This leaves Emma's suit powerless and her completely at the mercy of the little head's intentions. He starts to leisurely pulverize her body, but deep down Emma is still holding on, hoping Logan will wake up soon. Suddenly, a recording made by Emma starts playing in the truck, 
explaining that she made it just in case she didn't make it. She reveals that Mary had saved her in the past, and they had kept in touch secretly, even on the night of Mary's death. Emma had tried to save them, but it was too late for Mary and Logan's son. However, she sees the chance to save Logan. She expresses her regret for not being able to save his family, but she wanted to fulfill Mary's wish for Logan to live on. As Logan listens, his emotions intensify, increasing the synchronization rate with the suit. This causes a blackout, catching the attention of a nearby child. Logan emerges from the truck in his new suit, ready to finally seek revenge. The council has obtained footage of Logan in the streets, and they are observing everything that is happening. The little head is thrilled by Logan's new appearance and is eager to confront him. However, when he tries to get close to attack, Logan seizes his arms and body kicks him into a nearby building. Slowly approaching him while drawing his swords to finish him off, Logan is surprised when the little head uses his fire breath as a sneak attack. Despite Logan dodging by jumping into the air, the little head quickly catches up to him. The two engage in a fierce battle as they tumble to the ground, with the little head thoroughly enjoying every moment of it. He launches heat-seeking missiles at Logan, forcing him to flee to avoid them. Remembering Emma's advice about the suit, Logan uses his thoughts to enhance its capabilities, making it stronger with each vivid image in his mind. Putting this strategy into action, Logan moves with incredible speed, easily dodging all the missiles and leaving the little head bewildered as he struggles to keep up. After finally locating Logan, the little head unleashes a massive fire cannon to catch him off guard. However, with the enhanced suit, Logan powers through the flames and impales the little head, dragging him through several buildings. He finally corners him against a bus, the two swords piercing his chest with unwavering force. The little head's time is running out, evident by the copious amount of blood he coughs up. Yet a smile graces his face as he confesses his powerlessness against Logan in this battle. Despite that, he harbors no regrets, finding immense pleasure in the fight they just had. Witnessing the true prowess of a ninja exhilarates him, and he decides to conclude things with a grand finale. Pulling Logan close, he triggers the self-destruct sequence in his suit. However, Logan remains unscathed, firmly gripping the little head's entire body. Make no mistake, Logan desires the little head's demise, but he intends to make it excruciatingly painful and torturous. Logan discards the head at the Aza headquarters, leaving Dilly to interpret it as a warning of the impending fate awaiting the rest of them. Joseph was incredibly amazed by how skillfully Logan handled the prototype suit on his first attempt. He was so impressed that he couldn't help but desire to obtain the operational data for himself. Joseph wondered if it would be possible to negotiate with Logan and reach a truce. However, Dilly didn't think it would go well, as Logan seemed determined to ensure that everyone met the same fate as the little head. Meanwhile, Yamaji stood up from the table and declared that he was going to speed up the plan. He believed that the most important thing was to achieve their great cause. In another hideout, Logan and Emma discussed their situation after taking off their suits. Emma reassured Logan that the lieutenants of the organization wouldn't make any further moves for a while. Wearing the Gusoku gear granted them ultimate power within the organization. Therefore, Logan's act of eliminating one of their best would force them to reconsider their next move. Meanwhile, Zai meets with Yamaji and given the current circumstances, he has decided to no longer prevent Zai from fighting Logan. Zai now has full reign to do whatever he deems necessary to take him down. Logan has been gazing at Emma for quite some time, prompting her to ask him to stop and inquire if he has any questions. However, Emma makes it clear that she has a policy of not dating men who are married or have children, even if they are deceased. Curious, Logan asked about the relationship between Emma and Mary when she was still alive. Emma explains that Mary was the savior she needed to guide her to where she is now in her life, especially when she was just starting out as a ninja. During an undercover mission to assassinate a target, Emma let her guard down and found herself with a knife to her neck. To her relief, the person holding the knife turned out to be Mary, her mentor for that mission. At that time, Logan, Zai, and Mary were known as the top three individuals in the organization. It was widely believed that one of them would eventually rise to the pinnacle of power and inherit the organization. In their free time, Mary and Emma were having a conversation when Mary noticed that Emma always wore a mask, regardless of where they were. Curiosity got the better of Mary and she asked Emma why she always wore it. Although it was a sensitive topic for Emma, she decided to share her backstory. As a child, Emma was involved in a terrible accident that left her face disfigured and horrifying to look at. Her parents couldn't bear the sight of her and abandoned her in the hospital, never returning. Emma was then taken in by the organization and introduced to one of its leaders. He told her that she was ugly, and there was no way to change her appearance. However, he offered her the opportunity to become someone else and live as a ninja within the organization. Emma learned the art of disguise and became a master at transforming herself into anyone she desired. Curious, Mary asked if Emma would be comfortable revealing her true face to her. 
Though hesitant, Emma agreed and allowed Mary to remove her mask. She and Mary became very close during their time in the organization, and she learned a lot about Mary's life, including the fact that she grew up with Zai and Logan. Mary clearly cared deeply for them, which concerned Emma because attachment can lead to emotions, and emotions could be detrimental for a ninja. That evening, Mary took Emma for a walk and proceeded to explain in detail what her secret art was. This art allows one to make it appear as though someone has died by putting their body into a state of suspended animation. Emma felt honored that Mary trusted her enough to share this secret, but at the same time, secret arts are techniques that are not meant to be shared with anyone. So what reason did Mary have for revealing it? Mary simply thought it might be useful for Emma to know how to do this, and that was reason enough for her. Reflecting on those times, Emma can confidently say that those were the happiest years of her life, but they came to an abrupt end. Around the time when the ways of the ninja began to spread to the outside world, Emma found herself in a training facility meant to teach foreigners how to fight like ninjas. There were many who strongly opposed this, as the way of the ninja is not something that can be easily taught to outsiders. They only came for the weapons and killing techniques without caring for the code of honor that being a ninja entails. It remains a mystery why Yamaji made such a decision in the first place, but it caused a lot of unrest within the organization. During their next conversation, Emma expressed her concern to Mary about the organization's future, if things continued as they were. Emma hoped that Mary would step up and become the new chieftain to take control. However, Mary interrupted her and shared a confession of her own. She revealed that she was pregnant and believed that she no longer had a place in the organization since she had broken the code of never falling in love. Mary planned to go into hiding with Logan, as they were willing to leave the organization behind in order to raise their child together. Although Logan initially doubted his parenting abilities having been a ninja all his life, he knew that with Mary by his side, they could conquer any challenge. The organization's situation took a turn for the worse when Yamaji revealed his intention to move operations outside Japan. He warned that anyone who opposed him would be considered a traitor and dealt with mercilessly, leaving no room for questions. Despite this, other leaders in the organization had their own concerns about his plan. They believed that the organization was established to safeguard Japan, so leaving the country would be seen as a betrayal. They were determined to challenge him and not let him succeed without a fight. Two of the leaders are eager to confront him right away, but the leader at the back notices that Yamaji appears strangely composed when facing the leaders of a ninja organization. He attempts to caution the other two to hold off for a moment, but unfortunately, it's too late as they have already initiated their attack. And then we witness exactly why Yamaji was so self-assured. He transforms into Darth Vader. Utilizing the force, he chokes their necks and suspends them in mid-air for everyone to witness. Afterward, he unsheaths his sword and effortlessly slices both of their bodies in half. To add insult to injury, he proceeds to stomp on their faces, even though the woman is already deceased. This act of disrespect is on the verge of inciting a rebellion among the ninjas, but Yamaji has taken precautions against that. Blades are drawn to their necks, yet people are unhappy with this decision as it would mean forsaking the true ninja path. However, Yamaji proclaims himself as the epitome of a ninja, assuring that as long as he remains alive, the ninja way will endure through him. The choices presented are either to accept this or face death without complaint. Instead, the remaining true ninjas opt to abandon the organization, so as not to lose sight of the ninja way even if it means enduring the shame of becoming outcasts. Mary encountered the leader of the rebellion later and extended a helping hand. She had been developing technology capable of altering a person's appearance to any other face worldwide, believing it would greatly aid in safeguarding the fleeing ninjas. While on her way home, Mary noticed she was being tailed, and to her surprise, it was Emma. Emma disclosed that she had received a special assignment from a deceased leader, who fell at the hands of Yamaji. Her task was to assess whether Mary was fit to lead the organization, and if deemed unworthy, such as by violating the ninja code, Emma was to eliminate her. With the issuer of the order no longer alive, Mary questioned why Emma couldn't let it go, but Emma was determined to honor the man's final wishes. She urged Mary to abandon her child and return to the life of a ninja. As soon as those words escaped Emma's lips, Mary's demeanor shifted. The situation escalated into a physical confrontation, and Mary quickly realized Emma possessed greater skills than she had let on. Despite Emma viewing Mary as a parental figure, they engaged in combat once more, culminating in Emma holding a knife to Mary's throat. Mary confesses that she lost and wonders if Emma intends to harm her now. However, she is uncertain about what course of action to take. All she has ever desired is to live as a ninja. Unfortunately, the organization has changed drastically and running away and hiding for the rest of her life seems too feeble of a choice. If both options available to her are dreadful, then she decides to take matters into her own hands. In a desperate move, she tries to stab herself in the stomach, but at the last moment, Mary manages to catch the blade. 
She reveals to Emma that she never truly understood the meaning of family until now, thanks to this baby. In the same way, she considers Emma a part of her family and wants her to continue living. After reconciling, Mary asks Emma about her plans for the future. Emma responds by saying that she will stay with the organization for the time being, keeping a close eye on their activities. She has learned so much and now knows what Yamaji is plotting his master plan. Ayuze has revolutionized the energy industry with their groundbreaking reactor system, surpassing any power generation technology ever witnessed before. Not only does it generate an unprecedented amount of power, but it also operates with remarkable efficiency and is environmentally friendly. Unfortunately, there are some influential individuals who oppose the widespread adoption of these reactors, fearing a shift in power dynamics. Consequently, the Secretary of Energy hesitates to expedite production. However, Joseph being proactive has taken the initiative to garner support from other officials, ensuring that the path to fast-track production remains open. The Secretary of Energy is aware that the individuals on this list would not easily agree to approve the project, leading him to suspect that Joseph may have bribed them. Although the officials seem convinced, Joseph reassures him that bribery was not a factor. Instead, he emphasizes that the decision was influenced by the fear of facing consequences from Yamaji if they were to decline. Therefore, he encourages the secretary to give his approval as well. Emma informs Logan about the specifics of Yamaji's master plan. According to the plan, Yamaji intends to offer Ayuze his ninja army as support to expedite the advancement of their energy systems. Once these systems are successfully implemented worldwide, Yamaji plans to utilize his newfound influence to gain control over countries from within. After Emma became a lieutenant under Yamaji, she came to the realization that the organization had become mere puppets to Ayuze. As a result, the pride associated with being called a ninja no longer exists. With no other options left, Emma's only course of action is to assist Logan in completely dismantling everything. In the meantime, Mike has recently informed Jason about the current situation, and understandably, Jason is panicking. Just a few days ago, he was simply an angry guy who got fired from his job, but now he finds himself being pursued by ninjas all because of Mike's appearance. Mike tries to justify the situation by suggesting that Jason would have been in danger regardless, considering his involvement in Ayuze's affairs. Now that Jason has already taken a risk and made himself a target, the only option left for him is to continue moving forward until they uncover Ayuze's hidden secrets. Jason is willing to assist, but only under the condition that Mike protects him until the very end. However, Jason won't be able to take any action until he has access to a computer. Mike mentions recognizing a name in the AUZ database, prompting Jason to inquire about Emma's identity. Mike is left with a lot to process as he discovers that Emma has been a spy all this time. Meanwhile, in AUZ City, all citizens must pass through mandatory checkpoints due to the previous night's battle chaos. In a truck nearby, Emma and Logan are preparing to flee. After Emma successfully executes her program, she temporarily disables all electrical systems in the city. She then switches the truck to gas power and drives through the checkpoint. The guards attempt to launch a drone strike, but with the systems offline, they can only watch as the fugitives escape. After leaving the city, Lovid inquires if Emma has any clue about Yamaji's current whereabouts. Regrettably, she is unaware except for the fact that he must be executing his plan at this very moment. Their recent activities have compelled him to act swiftly, thus they must also strategize their next move. Their upcoming objective is to infiltrate one of Ayuze's incomplete power plants, where they will harness the energy to enhance Logan's Gusoku gear. There should be portable energy tanks available for use during the operational test tomorrow. Based on the information gathered from Intel Emma, she knows that the other lieutenants will also be present for the test. Logan sees this as the perfect opportunity to pressure them into revealing Yamaji's location. However, Emma reminds him of the importance of staying focused during the fight as the Gusoku gear performs better when he is less distracted. Levin understands that he needs to find a way to control the anger he feels inside, but that is easier said than done. That night, Lubin reflects on the family he lost while Emma works on optimizing the gear's performance for him. She acknowledges his incredible fighting skills but remains determined to do everything she can to protect him, especially for Mary's sake. In the midst of the operational test, soldiers were deployed to confront Dilly, who was utilizing her suit at its maximum capacity. Initially, I believed this was merely a test, but to my surprise, she was effortlessly incapacitating these soldiers by snapping their necks. It was evident that she was doing so simply because she could. Meanwhile, Joseph was positioned in a jet above the field, serving as the Minister of Defense. Curious about her reaction, he inquired if she was impressed by the ongoing spectacle. However, due to the limited battery capacity, these suits could only function at full power for approximately five minutes. Nevertheless, they proved to be an incredibly formidable force. 
Simultaneously within the power plant, the operational test was also being conducted on the energy systems alongside Big D's equipment. Fortunately, there were no explosions, indicating a successful test. However, Big D seemed to have a different focus at the moment. Emma is also present in the base and she just managed to secure one of the energy tanks. She was about to regroup with Logan when suddenly, Big D appeared and attacked her with these floating centipedes. Unfortunately, Emma is at a disadvantage because she doesn't have her gear with her. Realizing this, she decides to try and escape instead. Just as Big D was about to reach her, Logan bursts in through the ceiling and blocks the centipedes. Big D recognizes Logan's suit as a warrior type and has always wanted to test himself against a worthy opponent. So he proposes a deal to them. He knows they are eager to find out where Yamaji is at the moment, so if Logan agrees to a fair one-on-one -on -one fight and wins, he will reveal that information. Emma is skeptical about this offer as it seems like a trap, but they don't really have a choice. Big D takes the initiative and launches his centipedes at Logan. Seizing the opportunity, Big D swiftly kicks Logan into a wall and ensnares him with one of the centipedes, all while relentlessly attacking. Logan finds himself in a tough spot, but Emma is determined to find a way to help him turn the tide. Currently, Big D is recharging his suit wirelessly with a reactor system. If Emma can find a way to disrupt it, Logan might have a chance to fight back. However, it won't be easy, as Big D has already sent one of his centipedes after Emma. Despite the challenges, Logan starts to regain his strength by destroying one of the centipedes and skillfully dodging the subsequent attacks. Meanwhile, Emma showcases her impressive skills by evading the centipede and using her equipment to halt its advance. Emma remains composed as another individual approaches, but she remains unfazed. She swiftly retrieves one of the energy cores and ingeniously transforms it into an improvised grenade, demolishing both the power generator and the threat. As the dust settles, Emma realizes that the explosion has destabilized the building, forcing her to swiftly evade falling debris. Unfortunately, she inadvertently rolls onto a hollow section of the floor, causing her to plummet with no means of survival. Just as she is about to suffer a potentially fatal injury, Logan comes to her rescue, catching her in the nick of time before his suit loses power due to the damaged generator. Although the power supply to their suits has ceased, there is still a chance for Big D to easily overcome them by summoning reinforcements. However, he won't take that action because it's an unfair move and he doesn't operate that way. Instead, he will let them be until the next opportunity for a fair fight with Logan arises. With that, the two successfully escape from the base unharmed. While Logan assists Emma in bandaging herself, he curiously asks why she went through so much trouble to protect him. Emma explains that she claimed it was to fulfill Mary's wish, but in reality, she is doing it for her own reasons. Mary never directly asked her to do anything, but Emma feels compelled to do it anyway. Just then, she receives an alert indicating that someone has just started their computer car. Mike and Jason manage to acquire the car through unconventional methods. Although this may prevent Mike from returning to his previous role as an FBI agent, he is content as long as he can protect innocent people from danger. Jason is attempting to break the encryption that Emma had placed on the car, but it proves to be too challenging for him. The complexity of the encryption leads Jason to believe that Emma is not just an ordinary individual, she must be a highly skilled computer genius. Suddenly, the radio unexpectedly turns on, playing a song that triggers a memory of Emma within Mike. Right after she joined the FBI and became his partner, he decided to take her to a bar. He wanted to address her tendency to act independently too often, but Emma didn't see any reason to rely on him. Mike attempted to convince her that trusting him more was crucial since partners are like family, but she still didn't view him as family and found him to be cringy. Despite slowly warming up to him, Mike would often complain about Emma ruining the good vibes with her attitude. In an attempt to lighten the mood, he would start singing. Emma eventually tracks down her car and corners Mike and Jason. Jason panics and hurls a cluster of firecrackers towards them, leaving Mike to swiftly react and attempt a judo throw on the assailant. Surprisingly, Logan remains unmoved, displaying his rock-solid abs. With the realization that there is no imminent danger, they all settle down to have a conversation. Now Mike is enlightened about the entire saga involving Emma, who was secretly assigned as a spy by the FBI. However, she assures him that she played no part in the plot to harm Mike. Mike didn't find solace in the fact that she was simply following orders. He felt the need to take a break and process everything. However, as he stepped outside, he completely forgot about the firecrackers scattered on the ground and ended up falling right into them. Later, Emma patched him up and apologized for keeping the truth from him for so long. Surprisingly, Mike didn't hold her accountable because he understood that she had her reasons. Just like his late daughter wanted, he was willing to do whatever it took to protect innocent people. Although he disliked being kept in the dark, he didn't harbor any anger towards Emma for hiding things from him. 
They reconciled with each other, and the following day they dedicated some time to examining the evidence they had gathered on Oz's plan. They are determined to utilize their technology to gain control of all energy infrastructure worldwide. Despite having video evidence of Auze's creations, it would easily be dismissed as fake if presented as proof, as who would believe that ninjas are utilizing Auze suits? However, this doesn't mean they can simply stand by and allow them to take over the world. Meanwhile, Joseph is struggling to cope with the aftermath of the attacks that Logan and Emma experienced. He reassures the ministers that he will handle the situation, but there is no guarantee that he can maintain control. The team then discusses their next steps. Emma and Logan will head to active power plants to shut them down and take the energy supplies they need. Meanwhile, Mike and Jason will continue their investigation, with Mike cautioning that they might inadvertently reveal the existence of ninjas to the world. Logan is indifferent, so Emma grants Jason access to her computer. Mike's curiosity about Emma and Logan's relationship backfires when he gets a swift kick in the groin. On the other hand, Joseph is angry that Big D allowed Logan to escape. Yamaji explains that Logan is too skilled in combat, so Big D's decision was justified. Despite this, Joseph is still furious as government officials are reconsidering their support due to the reckless ninja. Joseph is completely crazy as he claims to have complete control over people, nature, and all living beings. He sees dominating the world as a mere game, but he threatens to end their partnership if Yamaji fails to control the ninja. Yamaji is not comfortable with this game-like approach, so he clarifies that the ninja's mission is to find despicable individuals like Joseph and eliminate them. This threat angers Joseph, and he warns Yamaji that if his people make another mistake, he will force them to commit seppuku. However, when Joseph leaves, Yamaji points out that the fool doesn't even know the difference between a ninja and a samurai. Yamaji realizes that the time for action is now, and we catch a glimpse of Zai. Meanwhile, our hero Emma explains that something called the Aizuna circuit is the core of the Kusoku gear. It is extremely delicate and sensitive, so it must be handled with great care. He should handle it like he did with Mary, but Logan points out that he always used to upset her. Emma hands him the Gusoku gear manual to study thoroughly, but Logan insists she focus more on her own safety. She has already assisted him a lot, so he suggests she stick with Mike and start planning how she will stay hidden once everything is resolved. Emma is fed up with guys trying to act tough, but Mike reminds her that in their line of work, being partners is like being family. She refuses to let him go alone but agrees to assist Jason, who she calls the weirdo, with the investigation first. Jason doesn't appreciate being labeled as the weirdo and surprises them with some food. He mentions that famous gangs like the Yakuza have eaten together throughout history, so they should do the same. Emma considers how Mike and Mary would share their thoughts on family with her, and she starts to believe in their perspective. They all have a great time together, but a tracking device is discovered on their truck. Meanwhile, the Secretary of Energy is seeking answers about the power plant explosion. Joseph tries to downplay the situation, but he is warned that the advisory committee can no longer ignore public opinion, regardless of any bribes. Joseph becomes angry, and the call abruptly ends. Dilly explains that Big D is unavailable because he requested the day off for his daily fade. Despite this, Joseph insists on contacting him due to the emergency. Big D ignores their calls, already aware of their intentions and having taken care of the matter. As he tracks Logan, the intelligent man concludes that life is meaningless without grace. Joseph was upset that he missed something, so Dilly offered to make it right on behalf of Big D. Joseph decided to step out for a while, but Dilly would have to make it up to him when he returned. Later, Joseph bumped into Zai, who suggested that if he were in charge, he would have taken care of Logan immediately. Zai inquired about Joseph's presence there, and the researchers explained that he was just checking on Big D's equipment maintenance. Zai then checked on the progress of a new Gusoku gear, which was reported to be 95% complete. Meanwhile, Mike asked Logan to look after Emma when they split up. In her car, Emma and Jason searched for a report in Oz's server, which contained crucial evidence needed to bring down Aza, as well as the identity of the person they were reporting to. This was significant, as the person was a high-ranking official in the country. Big D was pleased with his haircut and praised the barber's improved skills. Big D receives word that his Gusoku gear maintenance is complete, so he sets off. Upon returning to the car, the nerds successfully breach the firewall. Emma tries to calm down Jason, but he's already set on seeking revenge. Just then, Big D shows up and urges Logan to quickly gear up. Emma authorizes Mike to utilize the weapons in the truck, prompting Mike to instruct the nerds to stay in the car and continue hacking. Logan arrives fully equipped, leading to a showdown between the two. Despite Logan managing to slice one of Big D's worms, they quickly regenerate. Big D becomes enraged when Joseph's men show up to intervene. Joseph promises not to interfere with the fight and instead they open fire on Emma's car. 
Emma deploys her robots to shield the car, warning that it won't be enough if the enemy has rocket launchers. Unfortunately, they do, but Mike fights back using Emma's weapons. The initial plan seemed to work, but unfortunately, it ended up putting him in harm's way. Jason took over the hacking, while the rest of the team prepared to assist. Logan's ninja skills were put to the test as he faced off against Big D, who continued to push him back. Mike found himself in a dangerous situation, but Emma arrived just in time to eliminate some of the enemies. The security center at Aza detected the hacking attempt, but it was too late as Jason had already obtained what he needed. A sniper took a shot at Mike, but thankfully he was unharmed. Looking back, Mike had asked Logan to protect Emma, but Logan's main focus was on taking down the organization. Mike joked that Emma's kicks were more painful than a bullet, but he was grateful for her protection. Emma still has much to learn from Mike, so he assures her that he won't give up just yet. Together, they work as a team to defeat more attackers. Mike wields a powerful Gatlin gun, while Emma showcases her skills with a handgun. Unfortunately, Emma finds herself in a dangerous situation, but this time it's Mike who comes to her rescue. As they regroup from the intense battle, it becomes evident that Big D is gaining control in the Gusoku gear fight. However, Logan cleverly uses a manual to gain the upper hand and ultimately pierces Big D's chest with his blade. Surprisingly, Big D finds satisfaction in the elegant battle they just had. After removing his Kusoku gear, Logan rushes to Emma's side and she explains that she never betrayed her true beliefs and was never on their side to begin with. This truth is difficult for Big D to accept, but he still considers it a beautiful answer. Prepared for Logan to end his life, everyone is left in shock as Big D begins to emit a radiant glow. Big D discovers that the despicable Joseph had rigged his suit to explode. The honorable fighter, enraged, shields Logan with his centipedes. Mike urgently runs to aid Emma, calling out to her. Emma, resigned to her fate, deploys her robots to defend Mike. Helpless, Mike can only watch and shout her name as the suit detonates, causing a massive blast. Meanwhile, Joseph at Aza is seething that Big D once again foiled his plans. The explosion was meant to take out all five of them, but only claimed one life. Logan emerges from the debris to find Big D missing and hurries to Mike and Emma. Emma, badly injured, manages to speak and worries about Mike's well-being. He assures her he's fine, so she apologizes to Mary for not being able to fulfill her promise. Mike pleads with her to stay strong as they wait for an ambulance and Emma reveals her true appearance. She is confident that Mike wouldn't be able to recognize her like this, but Mike reassures her that he would. He explains that it's a common technique he's familiar with and he promises to show her how to do it as well. Emma admits that she always believed she would die alone, but Mike refuses to entertain such thoughts. Emma begins to sing, triggering a flashback to the moment when Mike presented her with a bear at the bar. She envisions her younger self in that scene and relishes the moment as Mike joins in the singing. Emma now sings the same song, but Mike is overwhelmed with emotion as she passes away. The group then lays her body to rest. Mike admits that Emma was quite a handful and always tardy, they share a strong bond. He confesses that conversing with her felt like talking to his own daughter. Emma represented a second chance for him, but he could never bring himself to express his true feelings. He scolds her for thinking she would die alone, feeling regret for not being honest with her. Logan, however, is convinced that Emma understood his sentiments, as he has never witnessed a ninja facing death with the same expression Emma wore on her face. Mike has another emotional breakdown, causing everyone to fall silent. Once again, Logan makes a solemn promise to dismantle the organization and declares that it's high time to bring their battle to an end. Meanwhile, things take a turn for the complicated as we witness the completion of Zay's latest Gusoku gear. Zay's past was filled with darkness as he was once a captive child. However, fate took a turn when the organization eliminated his captors and Yamaji discovered Zai seeking revenge. Filled with anger, Zai attempted to attack Yamaji, but the latter managed to stop him. Yamaji wondered if Zai would plead for mercy. But to his surprise, Zai chose to retaliate by stabbing him instead. Yamaji explained that strength was the only thing he could trust, and he extended an offer to Zai. If Zai desired the power to wield deadly fangs, Yamaji suggested that he join him. Zai accepted the offer, and Yamaji became his mentor. Fast forward to the present, Zai prepares to don his new suit, ready to embrace his newfound abilities. Meanwhile, in another place, Mike playfully mocks Logan's taste for energy drinks, and he is taken aback when Logan bursts into laughter for the first time ever. Mike's hands are all roughed up from burying Emma, so he comments that this desert is too desolate for her grave. He doesn't want her to be lonely, so once everything is settled, Mike proposes they give her a proper burial in her hometown. Logan points out that ninja like them don't have hometowns, they are destined to ride away as nameless corpses. However, he suggests a different plan to make this place Emma's final resting place, close to the people she cherishes family. They vow to ensure her soul finds peace by bringing everything to an end. 
Logan plans to bring down Yamaji because he is the mastermind behind the organization, and the only way to dismantle it is by eliminating him. Meanwhile, Mike will handle Aza, as they possess substantial evidence of the company's corruption, which they intend to expose to all major media outlets. Emma sacrificed her life to obtain this crucial information, so Mike is determined to make the most of it. However, Jason uncovers a problem. The information they obtained is encrypted by a brilliant mind. Initially, Mike suspects Aza, but Jason reveals that it was actually Emma who encrypted it. She wanted to ensure its safety until it reached Mike, but unfortunately, her plan has backfired. Jason is faced with the challenge of solving this puzzle, but he's uncertain about his ability to do so. Suddenly, everyone is taken aback by a surprising news report. Oz is accusing terrorists, specifically Logan and his group, of being responsible for the attack on their power plants. Joseph is revealed to be the mastermind behind all of this, and he directs the Secretary of Seiki's attention to the fact that public opinion will now favor their side. The Secretary suspects Joseph of manipulating the media, but Joseph simply clarifies that the rest of the team is in agreement, so they should proceed with their collaborative efforts. The Secretary remains unconvinced about the safety of the power plants despite what Joseph claims. Therefore, he will need more time to make a decision on whether Joseph should be allowed to build more. Additionally, the Secretary reminds Joseph to control his anger, considering their previous conversation. However, after ending the call, Joseph becomes furious once again and wishes that the secretary would simply listen to him and follow his instructions. His rage intensifies when he learns that they have been hacked and that top secret data may have been stolen. Meanwhile, things are getting even worse for Joseph as Yamaji informs him that they have successfully obtained all the necessary information from the Aza company, enabling their organization to create their own Gusoku gear. Upon returning with Logan, the group realizes that their plan has been foiled due to Aza's control over the media outlets. They understand the need for an alternative platform to amplify their message, so Jason suggests utilizing Chick Tech. However, his idea for making their video go viral is deemed inappropriate by Mike. Undeterred, Mike comes up with his own plan and instructs Jason to focus on breaking the encryption while he figures it out. Suddenly, their surprise is interrupted by the unexpected arrival of a crow in the truck. The crow carries something in its mouth, which Logan explains is a challenge to a duel. Ignorantly, Jason assumes that Logan intends to fight the crow, but a flashback reveals the true answer. When Zai accompanied Yamaji, the latter revealed that ninjas are the most formidable warriors known to man, and whoever leads them possesses the power to rule the world. As time passed, it became evident that Zai's anger never subsided. During a sparring session, an opponent surrendered, yet Zai continued to attack him. Logan intervened, but Zai proclaimed that weaklings like the defeated opponent had no right to be there. Logan mentioned that the guy is a ninja just like them, but Zai strongly believes that those who are not capable of fighting should be excluded. Zai argued that if stronger ninjas have to compensate for the weaker ones in combat, it will inevitably result in fatalities. Mary, who was also present, proposed that they settle their disagreement through a fight. Shortly after, their match concluded in a tie, and Logan praised Zai for his resilience. Following the incident, Zai engaged in rigorous training, and Mary observed that Zai only showed kindness towards crows. Zai was known as the Reaper because every opponent he faced gave up on being a ninja afterwards except for Logan. It puzzled Zai why Logan was different and Mary was surprised to see his interest in something other than crows. Later on, it was revealed that Logan, Zai, and Mary were the only ninjas who passed the recent examination. They were assigned a mission, and if they succeeded, they would officially become ninjas. During a the mission, they found what they were looking for, but were taken aback when enemy reinforcements arrived. Despite Logan and Mary's attempts to stop him, Zai stubbornly fought them alone, ignoring their pleas. Zai bravely faced the entire army, but soon found himself exhausted and outnumbered. In that moment, he recalled his belief that the weak must perish. He had come to terms with his fate, ready for death, but to his surprise, Logan appeared and saved him. Zai observed as Logan took on the remaining soldiers, and eventually, he decided to join forces with Logan. It was then revealed that the Yamaji had orchestrated the situation as a test. Zai felt anger towards his companions for rescuing him instead of completing the mission, but they assured him that they had acted in the best interest of the mission. They all knew they were strong individually, but together they could achieve so much more. Mary gently reminded Zai that he was not alone. Zai made the decision to open up to them, sharing the heartbreaking story of his parents abandoning him after birth. Left to die on a mountain, he was saved by crows who kept him alive. Zai now only had faith in two things, the crows that saved him and his own strength. He had never trusted anyone to watch his back before, so he wondered if joining them would show him a new world. Logan and Mary assured him that they would, and they formed a team. However, things became more complicated when Logan and Mary confessed that they were leaving the organization for breaking the code. Zai was shocked by Mary's pregnancy and reminded them of the pact they made to journey together and put their lives in each other's hands. 
Furious, Xi warned them to end his life then and there or he would hunt them down. They left him standing there, and the bow they used to make their pact broke right in front of him. Logan returns to the hideout, a place they used to frequent in the past. Jason expresses his wish that Logan had ignored Zay's request for a duel. However, Logan explains that facing Zai is necessary for him to move forward as Zai represents the past he left behind. Putting on his Gusoku gear, Logan prepares to confront Zai. Meanwhile, Mike reunites with his former boss from the FBI and sadly informs him about Emma's death. Mike credits her for helping them gather incriminating evidence against Aza. Emma remained loyal to her duty until the very end, which is in stark contrast to the FBI boss who has become Aza's puppet. Mike believes that there are still FBI agents who cannot be bought off by Aza. Knowing that this boss has connections to Aza, Mike is confident that he knows which FBI agents can be trusted. He requests the boss to hand over the evidence to them. The boss seems completely clueless, but Mike reminds him that they used to be partners. This guy once told Mike that it was their responsibility to protect the citizens from criminals who break the law. Sadly, this guy is incredibly corrupt, so he decides to call the FBI and inform them that he has located Mike. Meanwhile, Logan engages in a fierce battle with Zai, both wearing the powerful new Gusoku gear. They fight with equal strength and Zai challenges Logan to give it his all. Eventually, Logan manages to stab him, but it's not enough to stop Zai. The battle continues, and they end up losing their swords, resorting to punching each other with such force that their Gusoku gear suits explode. Zai declares that they should have finished him off when they had the chance. Logan realizes that he embodies the mistake he made in trusting someone, so he goes to cleanse his past by shedding his own blood. Logan is determined to fulfill his duty before he can rest, and he won't give up until it's done. They both decide to help each other get rid of their burdens once and for all. That's where this video ends. You have to click on the right to see its next part. And to see best anime recap on my channel, you have to click on the left. If you liked the video, like it and subscribe to see more contents of this.